refreshed from the vaults of total playability comes this unique reprise of the classic shoot 'em up. That pretty much sums up Iridium 2. It's a sequel to the Commodore Classic, um, which I I reviewed earlier. Um, and this game, uh, some people like it more than the first one, and some people don't. Um, they're both really, really good games. Um, if you don't know, the premise is that you are in a uh, Manta Starfighter and you take on these Star Destroyers. Um, and you have to blow up enough of the base that you can land and then from then on you you go inside and plant a bomb and blow it up um, and going inside takes the, the form of a bonus round um, in the Commodore one it was uh, pretty weak this one soups it up actually this is souped up in pretty much every respect also I don't know if you realize but uh, May 31st is International Omega Day so that's why I'm covering this I just uh, wanted the intro to play out a little bit because it's so cool. Uh, the music's so good in this game, the visuals are really good, um, and the gameplay is fantastic. And it's one of those games that hasn't been cloned a whole lot. You know, when it comes to most uh, sh kind of shmuppy uh, styles, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Toplin like Raiden or, you know, Battle Squad kind of ripped that off and so did a bunch of other stuff, you know, or like Gradius style or whatever, you know, they've been kind of, uh, I don't want to say done to death because uh, people keep coming up with new ideas and new twists on them, but they've been done a lot. Um, this style of shooter kind of hasn't been done a whole lot. Uh, let's get into the game here and I'll show you what I mean. So, just like in the first game, you go kind of back and forth, defender style, kind of like a like a side view, top view kind of thing, um, and you destroy turrets, um, you destroy enemy waves, you get bonuses when you destroy entire squadrons, so it pays it, you know, chase them down and get, get them all. Um, and then when it tells, tells you to land, you seek out the uh, correct landing pad, which has big glinky arrows on it, and you, um, you know, you go inside. And this is where you shoot the core as it is. Um, you know, it's not that challenging, there's a bit of inertia in this part, um, because it's kind of a zero-g chamber and, you know, you once this thing goes, uh, it goes to kind of a bonus mode. Your hit points are in the lower left, um, and you know the, the deal is you avoid the the falling rocks because it's self-destructing um, as much as possible. Grab as many powers as you can. You hold down the button in it. Uh, the, this little warp field appears, and you warp out of there while you're still alive. So you, you kind of try to cut it as close as possible. <laughs> I kind of miss in the first game how uh, you're like flying along it as it's destructing, you know, kind of out outrunning the explosion, which I think is cooler than this effect here. But they're both pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, and you see those uh, those kind of blue spots. Uh, any kind of contrasting parts of the ship, you can, you can run into and die. Um, anything that's got a shadow under them. And it, it, they set out well from the background. There's not a lot of parts where it's like, oh man, I didn't know I could run into that, you know. I mentioned in the bonus round that there's inertia and you can take multiple hits, and in the uh, spaceship parts, that's not the case. The controls are extremely tight, um, you know, <laughs> when you die like I just did here, it's, it's pretty much your fault. Um, and you take one hit, um, that's all you get, unless you get shields. The uh, levels come in groups of a few, you know, uh, fleets of fighters. Um, the first fleet, you know, is about four levels or so. Um, second fleet is, you know, it's kind of the same deal. Um, and, you know, each one has a different flavor. Uh, this one you're seeing here, this is the second fleet, and I'm not a big fan of this series of levels. Um, 
because there's not a lot to shoot that you can hit with your gun. You kind of have to just wait a bit and shoot down squadrons and, um, you know, stuff like that. If you get anything that attacks the, you know, ground like, uh, bombs and then you can do a town as well. Until then, uh, you can, uh, you kind of hang out a bit. And the, uh, the core parts get hard. And after the second fleet, here's, here's the third fleet, and yeah, there's, there's more to shoot out with your main cannons again. Um, so that's good. Um, it gets trickier with uh, more and more objects on the, on the playing field that you can run into. You kind of have to, um, you can see them on your radar in the bottom, but you can you kind of remember uh, where everything is. And, um, you know, it, it, a lot like the first game. But here I go with the uh, screen clearing bombs. Yeah, the, the power-ups are really cool in this game. Yeah, actually, if, if there's one thing I feel like uh, European shooters do really well, uh, they, they always have uh, really cool power-ups, and um, I also love the art style. The shading is really cool. I love all the chromed-out stuff and the, the use of color. You know, the Amiga, um, this is a 1985 computer system, uh, well before the Genesis, um, and it's only got 32 colors versus the Genesis, the Genesis is uh, 64, uh, but the palette is really vibrant, um, and uh, so you can really uh, do a lot of good stuff with it. And I feel like European artists were exceptional in kind of harnessing that kind of rounded uh, uh, shading. Um, and you see it in, in Genesis games like Flink also, um, it's kind of art style. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, this spaceship has uh, jammers that jam your radar on it in some sections. I think it's pretty amazing that a computer from that long ago can uh, can do this stuff. Um, you know, compares very favorably with what I was playing on my Genesis, and um, you know, it, it's a lot more sophisticated 2D wise than what I was playing on my 386 at the time. I mean, sure, you know, my 386 PC. Um, if you don't know, that's a um, you know late processor. I got popular later. Um, you know, you, you can play Doom on it. With, you know, with his great 3D, but for 2D stuff. The Amiga was uh, way ahead of its time. Um, the you know something like Raptor can't really compete with this. Uh, in, in my opinion, Raptor is kind of a stews fest anyway, so it probably doesn't help matters. And uh, this game has a lot of really cool options too. There's a few different kinds of two-player modes and. Uh, um, so you can do two-player trading off, you can do two players at the same time where player one kind of steers and player two kind of moves up and down. Um, so you can kind of vaguely follow the first player. Uh, you can have a robot uh, sidekick who plays like as a second player also. Um, so there's a lot of good options. Now, one thing that does bug me, um, you're seeing this on an emulator because I can't capture it off my real Amiga, um, but the uh, it's windowed, um, on my system at least. I have my Amiga hooked up um, to a Sony PVM, um, which does 50 hertz, so, so it's running in PAL, um, or at least 50 hertz NTSC. Um, and uh, the, the viewing area is a bit small. Um, and I don't know if it does that on an Amiga monitor. I'm, I'm assuming it does. Um, if anyone out here has uh, has this on like a really stock Amiga setup, let me know if it's uh, still windowed like that. You know, it only really works in 50 hertz. Um, but it's almost like the screen size was made, you know, in case they did a um, NTSC version, which uh, they never did. This is a, a European only release. I also need to uh, apologize for the aspect ratio. It's actually uh, not this way on the real thing. And yeah, the, the game doesn't stop with new ideas. Um, every fleet brings different challenges, different kinds of ships, different patterns, different kinds of turrets. Um, they really put a lot in, into this game. Now, at some point, this was a slated for the Game Boy Advance. Um, going to be put out by Jester Interactive, and I, I believe they went out of business before that could happen, and I was very disappointed. I was very, very much looking forward to that, um, because, you know, this is such a cool series. Um, 
you know, Uridium 1 and 2 are both terrific games, um, and they're unique. They got kind of this Defender-like intensity, you know, I, you know they can take a lot of cues from Defender. Um, you know, and uh, there's not a lot else out there that kind of fits the bill here. Um, so yeah, that was a, uh, in my opinion, that was probably a loss, assuming it was going to be as good as this or the first one. Player one, ready. So uh, speaking of key differences between this and the first one, uh, the first one um, has fewer levels um, and gives up fewer lives. This is a much longer game. Um, and in the first one, the destruction you've unleashed on the starship resets after you die. In this, you kind of continue where you left off. Um, and it makes sense, you know, like I said, this is a much longer game, the levels don't repeat the same way. Um, you know, the first Iridium, you get halfway through the levels, the, the layouts repeat, I believe, but with a higher intensity. Um, and it depends what you're kind of, what you prefer. I mean, I, I think I personally prefer the shorter game, um, but uh, this, this one's pretty magnificent. It, it was actually one of the reasons I wanted to get a real Ami Amiga again. I mean, how intense is it when you're, you know, it's saying lad now and you're, you're thinking, where, where the hell is the runway, you know? <laughs> really, you know, and then, you know, there are fighters chasing you and mines out to get you and you're just trying to, you know, get off this level. Um, yeah, this game is, is uh, it's really something. So yeah, that's uh, Uridium 2, and um, you know, for those curious, um, Andrew Braybrook also made a sequel to Paradroid, his other popular Commodore 64 game on Amiga and ST, and I, I can't get anywhere in that game. But um, you know, if you're a fan of Paradroid as well, you might go and seek that one out too. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you blow up lots of Star Destroyers. Bye.